Hello again and welcome back for another quick tutorial. For today's project, I'm making a simple little wedding card for a very good friend of ours. So let's get started. Here's all the Spellbinder die templates I'll be using on my project that are arranged on my Grand Caliber space plate, which is pretty cool because I can do all of my cutting at the same time. I didn't use the leaf template shown here because it was a little too big for my finished project. And I didn't realize that until after the picture was taken. So I picked a smaller one that you can see on my finished project. For this step, I placed a scratch piece of cardstock on my base plate because I have some nicks and scratches on it. But I use my mat a lot and that's something that happens over time. But I did this for a couple of reasons. I should mention I only add the extra scratch paper when I'm working with Spellbinders and Pressabilities. The main reason is because I like to use it as a shim for the extra thickness. And the second is because I think it helps prevent the scratches from my base plate showing up on my card front because the Grand Caliber has lots of pressure. But this is something you don't have to do. So you have your scratch paper and the impressibility in place. Now get the die template with the cardstock still in it that you cut and embossed in the first picture of this video and place it on top of the impressibility. Make sure the cutting edges are facing up. Place your tan mat, then your pink embossing plate, and run it through the Grand Caliber, and this is what you get. Pretty cool, huh? Here's the mat I used to make my flowers. I find it works much better than a mouse pad or other mats available, and believe me, I've used them all. If you don't have one of these mats, though, I used a mouse pad for years and was quite pleased with the results. The tools you see are like my right arm when it comes to making my flowers. The black ones on the right are for cake decorating. Yep, they use them for making fondant flowers and they come in many different sizes. The pink ones on the left are from the same company as the mat and more expensive, but I use them both. But if you have something around your house that has smooth ends on them, they will work too. For me, here's where the fun starts making flowers. I did cut and emboss two of the flower templates because I want to layer them. In the picture, I used my smallest tool going from left to right on the very edges of the flower petal using quite a bit of pressure. I think the pressure is the key, so don't be timid here. Really add some pressure. Let's talk about the flower on the top. It's actually one piece of cardstock but by adding lots of pressure, the paper separates, so it looks like you have two layers of flowers. I went from left to right on the very ends but, of the petal, but as I started towards the flower center, with the tool and lots of pressure, I started pulling towards the center of the flower, which makes the ends of the petal curl up. The flower on the bottom, I stayed towards the very end of the flower. I think I have more pictures of this, I'm not sure. No, just close-ups of the finished flowers showing you all the dimension you get when you make your flowers like this. And I love dimension. The more, the merrier. Sometimes to a fault. I added my favorite little Maya Road flower to the center, colored the ends with my Copic markers, and then I blended them with my blender pen. I only wanted to use the rose in the center of this sweet postcard. So with my dye template taped in place, I then cut and embossed. On the back of my card front, I added some tape to the center, wrapped my silver cord around my card a few times, making sure the cord went over the tape on the back, added some foam tape, and attached to the rest of my card. I thought I needed a touch more of color, so I placed a scratched piece of paper between my card front and the card back and went around the edges with my Copic marker. If I'd have thought about this before I'd attached the two together, I wouldn't have had to do this step. But I also, did I, but I did, and I also added my Nesta Bling and my Nesta Board. I used small glue dots and attached my bow that was made with silver cord, then attached 3D glue dots where I want to attach my flower, and then last but not least, I applied again small glue dots to my leaves and then I added everything together for you. Okay, there you go. So here's some pictures of my finished card. I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial today. 
And if you want a complete list of supplies with links, please visit my blog at Linda's Works of Heart or Want to Scraps blog. Thanks again, everybody. Bye.